Well, here we are on blustery point, trying not to get blown over. The poor old cameraman, he's got his windsock on, his new microphone, so we'll try it out today. Just thought I'd show you honey harvest from beginning to end, because apparently people would like to see that. But before we do that, I'd like to show you my crazy idea. Yesterday here, it was 45 in the shade. And so I come down and I put a little bit of silver paper over top of the girls to try and keep them safe. It was that bloody hot the other day. I thought I might try and protect the ladies a little bit. But I don't know whether it was a good idea or not. I might get some rolls of this and put it in my own roof. Or well, the lad might actually take it for a, like, what's that? You could just put it on and you could do yourself a little bit of a suntan. Right. Oh, it's like Christmas time all the year round here in the beekeeping world. Check this out. I even bought myself my own present. I got myself a smoker box. So I thought I might keep me dad's smoker a bit safe in this box. Mind you, there's been some concern that the box will only last a week or two before I bloody run over it or see something stupid to it. So, you never know. If you only ever see this smoking box once, it was probably a short-term thing. And I'm also, also having a bit of a change. I'm going to try some hessian in our smoking pot. So I found myself some metho from another past life. And I thought, um, maybe we could pour some metho on our hessian to get it cranking along. Like our mate Wild Bill with his pine needles. I thought, well, I don't know. Is that multi-purposing hessian metho? <laughs> I've got it all over my fingers. <laughs> now I've got it all over my bee suit. So if I actually burst into flames, it was nice knowing you. Thanks for coming along on the Bush Bee Company's journey. Oh, there we go, we're on. I think I should have actually poured my metho on there and actually put it in upside down, so. But, I don't know, maybe that's kind of cool. Shit, do you reckon I should turn it over or should I leave it the wrong way up? Oh, come on there. Oh, here we go, here we go. Ooh, we've got our own little chimney. <laughs> chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim. We need a little car. Whoop, 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 whoop. I think I even got that done without getting burnt. That's kind of cool. So we thought we'd just take the um, capped red gum honey, pop it in the back of the ute and take that home and spin it out and then bring the same frames back here and so then the ladies can just rebuild it all again. So here we go. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> So I reckon we've got about two frames in here that we can harvest. Oh, that looks good. Ow! Have a look at that. Hopefully the girls will fly out and nobody will fly back in. <laughs> So if you're wondering what we're actually looking for, we want a nice capped frame of honey like that. So all the, all the caps are on, and then that basically means your honey's ready to rock, because they've evaporated it off to the thickness, or they've got rid of all the liquid that's in the nectar, 
So then she's nice and ripe, ready to rock and roll. Bit of red gum Mally honey on your toast in the morning. Mm -mm -mm. Well, that's if I don't eat it all. Well, now there's a puzzlement for you. Not necessarily more bees means more honey. Because these girls here have only got the normal brood box and one super. And there's not as big a population, but check this shit out. Well, hang on, this is not conclusive yet, because it's just our first box. But this whole super looks like it's pretty much full of honey. So, and it's nice and ripe. Probably all you old time beekeepers out there and already know all this, but anyway, it's an interesting little discovery. Anyway, this here developing a new business is a rather interesting little trip, isn't it? I was reading the fact that Honey is a class three food, so you have to have it in stainless steel containers in, in a sealed area. I thought, well, I've got a got an old beach tent here and I'm gonna put it up to keep my girls out because I don't want the bees here eating these honey because last time I did this, I had bloody honey bees everywhere. So I thought, even though today's ended up a bit crap weather-wise, I thought, well, well, I put them in here and it's supposed to, you're supposed to be able to wash the walls down, but I figure I can just fold the walls up, so that could work. <laughs> Anyway, we've only got a little bit of stuff here going on, so we'll have a bit of a crack, keep the girls on the outside, keep the sweet stuff on the inside, and we'll be all good. Stop it. Oh, God. I can't tell me we've got something ruined already. What's going on with that? Is that too full or something? Get <laughs> the top. Why is it doing that? Thing. Now I'm going to be in a puddle. Well, they say water and electricity. There's a recipe for disaster. Good grief. Oh, I don't know. We'll let it bubble away for a minute and see if it calms down. I said, it's no wonder my poor mum can't sleep at night, is it? You know, when we were catching that swarm in the box, dangling on a ladder, and I was jumping up and down to try and knock them out of the tree. My poor mother was watching that episode and she bailed me up and says, If you ever do that again, I'm going to write you out of the will, you stupid bush bee man. <laughs> oh, God, of course. I've been Christmas shopping all. I've been having all this excitement. I got myself a little bit of a crazy de-pouring tray. Obviously, if you're a bit more hardcore, you have an automatic decapper and all the rest of it. It's like someone's been eating too many beans back here. <laughs> just as a footnote, it's not me. I'm just, just Mr. Hose in the bucket's going crazy. I don't know what's going on. Right, here we go. Oh, we got our, look at this, we're getting all flash in here. <laughs> Hopefully we're getting all flash. I don't know. I'm still persisting with my honey pour. I reckon that's pretty cool. Hence the reason why we've got the farting going in in the background. People must love the honey extraction because I think the honey pour has had the most views out of anybody. So that's pretty cool. So we've we've probably been a, ended up being an advocate for these dudes. Although I don't know we picked this up from the hive works down in the city. Oh look out! That's not good. <laughs> we might have to wire that down, I think. Oh don't do that! I'm gonna have to put something on that, that's gonna annoy the shit out of me. In it. That's gonna be bloody unacceptable. I might have to get my oven rack back out. My dear departed dad used to say, two heads are better than one, even if one head is a donkey. So, just in this conversation, by the way, I think I'm the donkey. I was always the donkey, even when he was giving me shit. So, anyway, the lads come up with a good idea. With a bit of wire around there, and on we go for honey o. Look how neat yours is. <laughs> neat work, Dad. 
bloody younger generation are uh, just always got to be aesthetically pleasing. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know when you will off, lad. Now, on the advert, they say that these um, honey pores are easier for the ladies to reconstruct, but when you look at this, you think, holy shit, you're making a mess. But when you put them back in their, in their hive, they do, they just clean it all up, and next thing you know, they don't have to hardly make any new honeycomb. So they're, they're not full of shit after all. They're actually quite cool. That's it. That's a load. That'll be a load, I said. Being a bit old school here, we're a bit primitive or small scale. So we've got the turn them around. The old, there were some really old cool ones that you could actually have swing baskets. So the baskets would swing around, but then you can't get as many frames in your in your extractor, of course. So this is a bit, you know, you can get ones, obviously then the frames sit like this. And then they, you don't have to turn them because they're spinning and you can get a lot more frames in. But of course they're more expensive. The one I really want to get, if I ever get that far, is ones that sort of spin this way. And then you don't have to lift the frames in and out at all. But hell. That might be a that might be a little bit far away. I've all seen. There might be a lot of honey between here and there. <laughs> I thought this was a good idea because at least we can sort of let these drip. I had them in a pot before, as you probably remember from my first honey pour episode. I had them in a little plastic container. I thought, well, this might be a little bit more together, so I just have to wash one thing afterwards. But, anyway, I'll let you know. Well, you'll know anyway, because you're watching me right now, finding out together we are. Oh, look at that. The ladies have got something fresh to play with. Works pretty good, is not it? I mean, that's the go. Don't bug our eyes around and wait for tomorrow. <laughs> They're all in the same day. Although well, that one's a bit sticky. Might be a very rare item this year. Bloody river red gum, Murray River red gum honey. There's only a little bit of it going around. So, cool. Anyway, you never know. Be quick, remember I've been on that bloody honeycomb circle business, you might have to get online real quick and get hold of this stuff. Might be all gone before we start. little bit of the project finally get the honey in a pot so we can ship it around the world so you'd never be short of honey for your toast
or whatever else, or honey crackles. My dear mother-in-law, she makes some of the best honey crackles you're ever gonna eat. They are beautiful, just the right amount of honey, not too much and not too little. And oh, as you can see, I've got a bit of Christmas belly going on from her young cooking. So I've got myself a bit more of a bottling bench here going on, and I've got all the pots stored up in the sealed up container. So well, that was a bit snazzy. The wife helped me do that the other day, so she loves me a little bit still. <laughs> anyway, we'll jar up a bit of honey and send a bit off. And we've got the stickers in this drawer at the top, which is kind of cool. I'm going to have to order some more of those ones because they're getting a bit short, the kilo ones. What's in this packet? Another project. Golly gosh. Anyway, here's the sticker application bench. Tell you what, <laughs> things are a bit primitive here. I guess if I had an application machine, at least that'd be square, wouldn't it? Going on my track record, of course. I don't know that I'm still, I'm actually still allowed to put stickers on the pot, but only just. So, <laughs> so if you get a crooked sticker on your honey pail, just realise it was done with love, even if it is a bit wonky donk. And go around right here and put it on the scales. It smells like honey. <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> the one thing about this primitive system, I use the air on the generous side of the weight. It was a bit of a challenge, wasn't it? All that effort for a bit of river red gum honey. But it's gonna be in short supply this year, so if you wanna click over to the website, grab yourself some, you better be quick, because it'll be gone before we know it. But hell, it's yum though.